expressed on the edge are not necessarily those of this radio station, its staff, management, or other sponsors. We're back this week again with Spiritually Speaking, and my name is Larry Cat, your host. And we are excited, excited as always, to have you with us this week. Uh, as we start the show here, we're going to have uh, a correspondent, one of our correspondents, um, with us tonight, uh, giving a report uh, on an interview she gave with David Parsons. He is the get, or, uh, author of the book called The Quest for Right. And uh, her assistant, uh, Cindy, is also involved in the interview. Uh, Rachel has been with us for, oh, uh, just a few months now, I think, as a correspondent. And she's turned in some fabulous work, and we're excited as uh, to have her on the show and uh, have her participate in, in uh, this broadcast tonight. Uh, I'd like to uh, give a shout-out to all our listeners. And we just want to tell you thank you for tuning in and making this uh, this show so far a great hit. Uh, we've had a lot of positive feedback uh, from last week's show uh, as well as the other shows. And just excited that everyone enjoyed the show. And and um, and as always, I hope you got something out of it. Um, it's kind of a, a weird thing if you sit down and watch a show, especially about the spiritual topics, and, and not get something out of it. So I hope you got something out of it to take with you to apply to your lives and hopefully uh, better that for it. Um, as always, I'd like to take the opportunity to say if, uh, if you'd like to support The Edge other than listening, uh, we have that avenue for you. If you look at the link below the player there, you will see a correspondence. Uh, we're looking for a correspondence uh, link that you can uh, click on that, and that will send an email um, uh, to Andy Rafford, who is our uh, TV producer and our host for the Thursday reports. And uh, he takes care of all the... Um, correspondence and uh, does a great job at it. We have about 25, 27 correspondents right now, I think, and it's continuing to grow each day. And if you'd like to participate in more than just listening and get involved in the reports and the shows and the and the, and the the um, things we do here at The Edge, we'd be happy to have you on board. Uh, if you want to get involved, there are a variety of topics that we can do. We have research. Uh, we have, um, you know, uh, guest um uh, suggestions. We have uh, people that are uh, doing their own little uh, uh, reports to turn in on a pre-taped report. Some are done live, and uh, the you know the ranges of topics. You know, from you know Daniel's show does UFOs to to things on a religious standpoint. We have Andy doing his reports on Thursday on civil rights and human rights and uh, uh, you know corporations uh, out of control and government uh, uh, watchdog reports. Those are things of those natures. All fantastic stuff. And so you have one of those desires, or you can get on my show or help with my show uh, with the uh, spiritual matters and uh, Christian topics or other religious topics that you might want to discuss or um, or uh, want to suggest uh, or take part in the research part of it, hey, we can be happy to use all the help we can to produce the quality shows that The Edge have been producing. And uh, so we uh, want to always give the opportunity for that. And of always, if you just want to stay in, uh, tune in and listen each week and and, and contribute and, and um, help uh, support The Edge uh, in that way, you know what? We're excited to have you in that avenue as well. Uh, so this week, like I said, we're going to have uh, Rachel Kennedy and her, and her assistant Cindy on in just a few minutes here. And then after that, we're going to have a video, and it's called Unlocking the Mystery of Life. Now, the book that, that uh, David Parsons um, uh, wrote, uh, from my understanding of the interview, is a, kind of a, a biblical science uh, a type of uh, topic here. And so we're going to, to follow up with that interview uh, with a show called Unlocking the Mystery of Life. And that, um, that is a, um, a video uh, that was produced uh, by some scientists, uh, who most of were evolutionary scientists, uh, that started to question the flaws and the inconsistencies in evolution. 
and it's a, it's a fantastic program. Uh, it's gonna, I tell you, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit of link to it, uh, not not a whole long, uh, but it's a, uh, it's it's filled with information, uh, with a lot of leading experts as well as just some uh, great uh, uh, graphics to show you and some presentations they have on the video. And I think you'd be blessed by it. You know, uh, evolution is a thing that we have uh, that the, the Christian community and the uh, and especially the creation scientists have tried to to battle many years and continue continue to gain to uh, gain momentum and um, and uh, more credibility with that. And the fact that they can um, discredit a lot of the evolutionary scientists' findings uh, that are a lot of flawed and and a lot of um, a lot of uh, bad science, as they call it. So, but you watch the video and make the choice for yourself. Uh, here at the edge, we're about discovering the truth together, and and we want you to do that on your own as you watch the presentation. I would like to give a shout out to Andy Rafford, though, as I mentioned before, his name. He is the again the host of the Thursday Reports, as well as our TV producer. He produces my show as well as Daniel's, and he does his own. Uh, Daniel and I have a small staff that work with us, and Andy does it all on his own. I mean, and he helps us in our shows. On top of that, so uh, Andy doesn't like accolades and likes uh, praise, but we're going to give it to him anyway. And uh, so, Andy. We're thinking of you, and we appreciate you, and there's your praise. Take it and like it, okay? <laughs> so Andy's a great guy. We're lucky to have him, and I just want to give him a shout-out. Uh, he's helped out a lot, and uh, and I will tell you this as a fact. This show would not be to the quality it is without Andy Rafford's help because anyone who knows me knows Larry can't do it on his own. So we're back just in a minute. We'll jump right into uh, Rachel's uh, interview with uh, David Parsons, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Then after that, we'll come back for a, uh, for a short little break, and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, start the video for Unlocking the Mystery of Life. Don't miss this, folks. Stay tuned. It's going to be exciting tonight. We'll be back. Welcome to the Edge Radio Broadcast. This is Cindy, your Christian on a Mission. And this is Rachel, the Jewish princess working for the real kingdom. Today we have David Parsons. An author who seems to be ready to let the schools do what the schools should always be able to do, and that is to teach. Not to teach what only one side of society is interested in, but in what all sides are interested in. It seems that it is becoming clearer that people find it more acceptable to believe that we came from the Planet of the Apes series than to take a look at one of the oldest books known to the planet, the Bible. David, we're so glad to have you here today. Thank you. And I want you to start off by telling us about the quest for right, your idea for this, and I realize it's going to be a series of seven books by the time you're through, and how you decided on seven books, but go back to the beginning and let our audience know just who you are and how you got started. Okay, that's kind of easy. I can remember back when I was about the eighth grade, I went to a movie theater, and like most kids, I had a great interest in dinosaurs. In fact, the origin and demise of dinosaurs is the underlying thread of the first four books. In this particular movie theater, I had bought a, a large bag of popcorn, and they showed a preview of a movie called One Million B.C., and I'd never seen a dinosaur on the screen before, and it had dinosaurs chasing people and cavemen. Of course, there were no cavemen. They were running around trying to hide, and there was volcanoes going off, and this was a three-and-a-half-minute preview and at the end of it I looked down at my popcorn and it had disappeared. And so many years later when I was 36 years of age I had been reading the Bible and becoming very serious with God and I was in the dining room and I asked God the question. I said if dinosaurs are real and I knew they were because I'd seen their fossilized skulls and remains. I said someone in the Bible must have been suitably impressed to have recorded an encounter with one of you know, T-Rex or a Brachiosaurus. And I walked over into the living room and I sat down on the sofa and I began reading the Bible and then I found them in the Bible. And this is again the underlying thread. And for instance, just to start way back and give you a little bit of history, a scientist has never really gone back and looked at the original Hebrew words before. You can imagine back in the 1600s when the King James interpreters were trying to make some sense out of scientific terms, it was futile for them because they were in a scientific void. To give you for instance, when it said God created great wells, okay, we know that there are great wells out there, but if you look up 